Hello, I'm Jerry Horner, and um, today we're having the Bella Vista Gardening Program. And with me today is my guest, is Tony Lacasse. Good morning. And he is a fellow Benton County Master Gardener, and he's right. also the new president of the Bella Vista Garden Club. And um, we're really happy about that. And today we're going to be talking about critter control in your garden, the natural way. And we'll be talking about um, uh, events coming up and what to do in your garden for the month. So uh, the main thing I want to do is, is congratulate Tony on his new uh, position. You he's, know, he said you broke the plywood ceiling. Yeah, is that what you broke, said? broke the plywood ceiling, you know. <laughs> yes, yes. So we've yeah. never had a, a president of the Bella Vista Garden Club as a, a male before, but I think this is a... Well, it took years of marching to get here. <laughs> <but> <laughs> <laughs> you well, did. you did a lot of good... <laughs> a lot of good um, politicking right so anyway but we're just happy that uh, Tony's uh, our new president and because he's so involved with uh, gardening the natural way and we're all trying to get away from using chemicals and and terrible things for the environment so we're all working yeah. with Tony to to be better guardians of our Thank environment you. you don't need an oil well to have a pretty flower that's right <laughs> that's right there is uh, one activity occurring in June that we wanted to tell you about was uh, Duets in Bloom. It's a floral exhibit. It's going to be at the uh, Arvest Community Room off the right. square in Bentonville. Right. And it's June 19th, Friday, June 19th, and Saturday, June 20th. And it's going to be an ex a different exhibit. We used to have flower shows every other year. Right. And this year we're going uh, to have an exhibit, and it's a, a combination of the four local garden clubs. It's the Bella Vista Garden Club, it's the Bentonville Garden Club, the Garden Club of Rogers, and Florelia Rangers Guild. And the four clubs are getting together and they're doing uh, floral designs interpreting art. And it could be either a painting or a sculpture, but it's going to be really different and it's free to the public and there's more information going to be in the papers and, and uh, uh, we talked about it last month right. on the show. So. It's really going to be a fun event, and we're having wine and appetizers oh, on yeah. Friday at no charge, so maybe we'll have more people than we normally have at the flower shows. So. Yeah, I know several people involved in working on that, and they've been yeah. working really, really, really hard. We've been working on a year and now. They're extremely talented. They're mm -hmm. state winners, national winners mm -hmm. in, in the past of other events. So uh, mark your calendars. Yeah, it's it's going to be worthwhile to go down there and see this exhibit. June, June 19th June and 19th, 20th. right. Okay. But the main thing we're here today is to talk about critters in our garden. And so many people are so afraid of bugs in their garden. <laughs> and you know there's only, what, 2% of the bugs are really yeah, bad yeah, bugs? Yeah, 98% of the good guys. So we have a lot of good bugs. Yes, we do. That really help us in our garden. Right. But the ones we don't want, that's what we got to talk about. Right. Is um, like the aphids. Right. And bagworms, grub worms, mealybugs, scale squash bugs and spider mites yeah. so those are the, the worst ones right so uh oh and thrips and and, and web worms right right so but you have uh, recipes and and, yeah. and you, would solutions you want me to for address these? Uh, some of those i sure uh, would i think yeah. we need uh, to I all brought be educated a couple of those, make sure i don't miss anything yeah. here and just a couple of basic things yeah. with all this rainy weather uh jerry we're gonna see is as soon as the sun comes out, we're going to see a lot of problems in gardens mm -hmm. because the plants are in stress. All right. And what bad bugs do in life is they take out plants that are in stress. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so all this rain we've had yeah, is not there's, there's good. There's no oxygen in the soil. Okay. So it's and, all and saturated. So plants, exactly. If you had the best topsoil in the world, right now it's saturated. And the worms are coming up. And worms are coming up because of lack of oxygen, mm -hmm. so forth and so on. I so see. When you don't have oxygen in the soil, your plants are in stress, and here come the bad, bad guys, and mm -hmm. that's their job. Uh, just like, you know, you, you know how animals have, a, have the rut mm -hmm. so to, to make the strongest of the speed. They take out the weak, and mm -hmm. the strong survive. Right. Survival the plant is the life, Plant life does the same thing. Mm -hmm. And we have, you know, the bad insects, their job is to take out. So when you, you know, you'll have less has problems if you have really healthy soil and good drainage and mm -hmm. all that sort of thing. But even if you've done all those things with the kind of rains we've been having, 
they're going to have to deal with what we have to deal with right until it's, it's over. coming yeah. yeah so you know i i foresee you know the aphids just coming on like gangbusters right yeah. after this and you know the first line of defense is if you've got a nozzle with a real thin sp spray a real powerful really powerful you know hit the plant with that it tears up their little mouth parts because they're a real soft mm -hmm. you know uh, uh, animal and that tears them up. Usually, if you do it two days in a row, you'll pretty much get them. So they drop on the ground, but they don't come back up on the plant. Yeah, again. and and plus their mouth parts are torn up, okay. and they they can't they do can't any damage survive. anyway. Okay. And then the natural spray that we use is a, is a garlic pepper tea, you know. Okay. And you can make your own. We've got those formulas. It's kind of lengthy to go into today. Right. Of garlic pepper teas, where you make a concentrate in a blender. You know, or you can. Well, just, you want to don't want to take. Get, you, you don't want to take your blender you use for your margaritas. You want a blender just exactly. for the garden, right? Well, it is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it is just you know jalapenos and garlic. But, yeah. So, but you can uh, you can use powdered garlic. Mm -hmm. You know, and you can use uh, cayenne pepper. Mm -hmm. You know, and you can make uh, you know just dilute it in water and stir it up and stir. Okay. And well, we'll it. have all those. Um, yeah, we'll the formulas you talk about. We'll have them on the website, right. our Bella Vista Garden yeah. Club website. You know, uh, watch for bagworms. Mm -hmm. You know, on your uh, you know uh, your evergreens. Yeah, you know, on the evergreens. Keep an but eye. But they're out. like a little bag. They just they just yeah, look like a little. Yeah, but you want to get them before they make the bag and they're in there. And okay. One way to do that is uh, spray with BT, which is Bellin. Thesis theringitis, or you know, that's mm -hmm. why they call it BT. Um, and uh, you know, if you add a little molasses in with that, it makes it sticky mm -hmm. and it sticks, it sticks to the to limb. The... You want to spray early in the morning or just before it gets dark. Um, and and now, um, what do those little worms look like when they're before uh, they make he, the bag? He's just a little a quarter inch, quarter inch long, white, uh, cream colored, cream yeah, color. light cream colored. Yeah. Worm, so you got to be, you know, watching for them because once they start, that's their protector. Once mm -hmm. they've made that little cocoon, you're pretty much your gonna plants. Insect, you're you know? going to show it, right? Yeah. Um, you know, grub worms. Got to watch for grub worms uh, mm -hmm. right now. Uh, beneficial ne nematodes are my favorite thing to do. You mm -hmm. know, you get a lot of bang for your buck with those guys. Right. The populations build up. Uh, you have to pretty much go online. Uh, order them, and I always tell people to shop around because there's a wide variety of prices on mm -hmm. them. But very easy to apply. You just mix it with water for 15 or 20 minutes and, and pour it around. Um, uh, mealy bugs, uh, you know, you're going to use horticultural oils to control those guys. Uh, lizards work really good if you have a lot yeah, of Yeah, I have a lot of and lizards. If you don't use a lot of chemicals and you have lizards, chances are you're not going to have mealy bugs. Yeah. Um, scale, you know, you're going to use horticultural oils again. Mm -hmm. Uh, ladybugs and praying mantis work really great. If you don't have a lot of praying mantis, you can order those also. They send you the little cocoons. Well, a lot of people are afraid of them. They're afraid they're going to bite them. Oh, no, no. You know? Yeah. Well, they, they are a meat eating insect, <laughs> like <laughs> so, a spider, but I've never known them to really bite people. Yeah. They bite, <laughs> they bite they things that look. they know that they can, <laughs> that they can handle. They don't they bite just, a, they don't bite off more than they can chew, unlike some of us. <laughs> okay. And they just look a little bit, you know, strange. Yeah, well, they look menacing, like a, and yeah. that's good, because mm -hmm. scare the bad guys off. Right. You know, they're intimidators. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, squash bugs, you know, you can control with, uh, with a compost tea and orange oil mm -hmm. uh, in a drench. Uh, you can hand remove them. <laughs> now, your orange oil that you talk about, that's a really potent oil. Extremely potent. Extract. Right. So that's right. something you have it's to argue citric online. acid. But it's, it's just the pulp, you know, left over from the orange juice producers, and right. they cooked it down. And cooked but it's not it down. like you can take your orange juice and make the citric no, oil. No, no, this no, is no. very this concentrated. Is high pressure, high, long process yeah. to get it to that mm -hmm. refined down to, the, to that to where it's citric acid. So okay. you have to use it very judiciously. Well, yes. You know, um, the other thing we're going to be watching for are spider mites. Mm -hmm. You know, and of course, they're always present, those little right. guys. Little red ones. Yeah, they're always running around. Uh, you know, I, I don't have a lot of problems with these things, but, you know, again, um, just, uh, you know, liquid seaweed with a little, little uh, again, a little orange oil mixed in with mm -hmm. it uh, seems to, uh, to run them off. Um, thrips. Now, thrips really attack sometimes the daylilies. Right. 
So they and do a lot of damage to the yeah, blinds. Yeah, they do. And I like uh, green lace wings. You know, and again, uh, you can order the gray lace wing uh, fly, you know, mm -hmm. and release them in your garden. Um, so if you have a so big... So you build up that population. If you're not using pesticides, mm -hmm. you can build up healthy populations of the good guys. And green lace wings is certainly okay. one of them. So like if you have a large uh, daylily bed, you'd want to release them right in Ex that bed. Exactly. When the or best if you have them, like some daylilies here and there, you would put them right where the daylilies right. are. Right. And you want to do it, you want to do it um, uh, just before the sun sets. Mm. And you want the foliage to be wet. Because mm. they, you know, they've been in sort of a hibernated state in mm -hmm. that little container, and so when they come out, they're they're thirsty and they're hungry. Mm -hmm. And if there's moisture there, and they only they don't fly at night, they only fly during the day. Mm -hmm. So they're going to hang around, and they'll be working. That when night. they wake up in the morning, they're going to be hydrated and hungry. Mm -hmm. And and if you have a problem, mm -hmm. you know, they're going to go to work on on those uh, uh, And what thrips. else do they take? What else do they eat? Um, the, the well, well, they'll, they just, aphids? Yeah, or? yeah, they'll eat Anything. aphids too. Yeah, green lace wings that will eat uh, aphids also. Mm. Um, and uh, your, uh, your garlic pepper teas work uh, really well also. Mm -hmm. yeah, I've been making my, <laughs> down through the years, I've always made my concentrate from fresh gar garlic mm -hmm. and then I saw a special the other night on PBS on the Queen's Garden in London. Oh, yes. And she uses powdered garlic. Garlic powder. <laughs> well, I said, I've been going through a lot of work. For right, because it's So, already... yeah, you can just buy powdered garlic, just mm -hmm. stir it up with water and, uh, and, and use it as a spray. And they do it, they, they spray regularly in the Queen's Garden. And that's at seven acres behind Buckingham Palace. It's so pretty. Well, it's not open to the public. No. That garden. No. And it's really a, a gem of a... Right example of how you can have a wonderful garden without chemicals. Well, what I, exactly. Mm -hmm. It's all natural. Right. What I like about that garden is they divided that seven acres up into thirds. A third of it is lawn area for parties and entertainment. Mm -hmm. A third of it are the flower gardens. And a third of it, guess what? They so left it on natural. natural. It is totally untouched. Mm -hmm. There are owls, foxes, mm -hmm. every kind of animal you can think of. Downtown London. Mm -hmm. Somehow, some way, they found that natural area and they've set up housekeeping mm -hmm. in there. And it's just, a shame it's not open to the yeah, public that we can right. all so see it. So it just proves, you know, if you don't need an area, let it, you know, leave some habitat mm -hmm. for wildlife. Oh yeah. You know, and I mean, we've if got the a lot of that. can do it downtown London, certainly we can. <laughs> well, know, we've so. got so many uh, <laughs> areas in Bella Vista with, you know, natural right. uh, areas, so. Right. And, so and we've been and very we, blessed. We we do have that. Yeah. And then um, and we talked about uh, webworms already, so mm -hmm. that's uh, Well, webworms are the ones that farm in the trees. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's the other guy. And the yeah. best thing with those guys is if you'll just break the web with a long pole or something, any sharp object, mm -hmm. uh, long fishing pole, if it's up in a tree or something like that, you break the web, the wasp will do the rest of the work for you. So, mm -hmm. you And they're know, not going to kill the tree unless they completely engulf it. Right. So, you know, Now those don't come in the fall. Around, well, what I'm saying is don't run around killing every wasp you see. Right. You know, if they're not just over your, the door you go in and out of the house from mm -hmm. all the time, or they're somewhere else on your property, they're beneficial. They're mm -hmm. very helpful, especially against, you know, caterpillar type insects that eat foliage. Right, but they also kill some of the caterpillars that make beautiful butterflies. So it's it's well, a, I know, but you know, it's a trade-off. We've sometimes. had. Let me let me tell you, they don't do. You know, I've been in parts of the world where the butterflies are so thick that every thirty minutes on the highway you have to stop and clean, clean the up. butterflies off your radiator. Mm. Okay. <laughs> And they're not spraying out there. There's mm -hmm. plenty of wasps, you know, but there's yeah. still plenty of butterflies. Right. But, right. but uh, if you'll open those webs, you know, the wasp will do the rest of the Now, the webworms, are those the ones that come in the fall? Yeah, in the summer. They start late they start summer late in summer. early fall. Yeah. Right. But see, a lot of people are so worried. They cut the limb off, and, you know, they no. just almost destroyed the tree no, or something. No, not you necessary. Know. Just... just just open the web mm -hmm. and let nature and let do nature the rest. let nature take care of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what we want to do. Is yeah, they build that web for a reason. That's to protect themselves. Right. You know, once you break that barrier, they're not protected. Right. 
So I know you have a long history of, of being um, natural with all your gardening. Yeah, only 47 years. Only, only 47 <laughs> years. Well, <laughs> um, that's a long time to be natural. Right. And I just, I you know, woke up one day and, and uh, we were newly married in the new house in the suburbs, you know, uh, you know, the two little girls, the whole thing. And I'm, I'm at a box store and I'm walking along and there was that wonderful aroma you get in that section, you know. In the garden stuff. section? Yeah. Oh. And I started looking at those labels with the skulls and crossbones <laughs> and everything. And then I got to thinking about my little girls playing in that stuff in the backyard. And I said, we haven't always done this. There's got to be another way. And mm -hmm. I just started looking into it. And I saw that the gardens of Versailles, you know, were all, all done naturally. And then shortly after the, you know, they went chemical after the war. And then a few years later, they went back. And even mm -hmm. today, they're 100% organic. So if they can draw a couple million visitors a year to see those gardens and they're not using these things, then we don't need, we certainly don't need, don't need, them. need them in our neighborhood garden. No, we don't. No. <laughs> so that, but it was really the concern for my children that got me yeah, going on this. Well, that's a, that's a good pivot point, yeah. you know, that people don't think about when they use all these chemicals, what right. it does to the, the environment, what it does to you, you right. know. Um, when, you have, when you have to put a hazmat material on to use this product, it's right. probably not a good idea. Well, then, in that, then later in life, I'm learning now just in the last few years, and university study has proven it, that the more life there is in the soil, okay, the healthier plants are, mm -hmm. and the healthier plants are, the fewer disease and pest right. problems they have. So, uh, Think of yourself as a soft-bodied animal living in the soil, and now all kinds of toxic stuff is being rained on you, herbicides, pesticides, mm -hmm. fungicides, on and on and on, you know, that are not natural to your world and are highly toxic mm -hmm. to your little body, you know. Right. So we're finding out the higher the constant, the higher the numbers of microbes in a cubic foot of soil, the healthier that soil is, the healthier right. the plant is, the fewer problems in the garden. But all those chemicals are going back into the to the water. Oh, well, that's you the know. other thing. Then yeah. it goes past, past, past the, soil. the animals and past the soil, and, and it, it gets, gets into our groundwaters, and it shows up all over. It's right everywhere. back into us. And it shows right. up everywhere. Right. So yeah. we have to be careful of that. Yep. So. yep. And then native plants are also very... Um, easy to grow. Big movement toward natives. We're trying to get more native plants yeah. because they have a, an ability to survive without all these chemicals. And right. We're and getting more and more visitors. I'm a docent mm -hmm. at, at Compton Gardens. Right. We're getting more and more visitors all the time to Compton Gardens right. because people are wanting to learn about native plants mm -hmm. and Compton is about 90, 95 percent. I'd say about 90, yeah. And, uh, and Crystal Bridges uh, right now is about 60 or 70 percent were they were the goal of getting to 90 percent. Right, I think that's native. their five-year goal is to right. get to 90 percent. Right. And that, um, that's a good thing. Yeah. Uses less water too. Mm -hmm. and we right. don't, well, of course, what we've had the last few weeks, we don't think we have a water problem. But, uh, you know, I will learn one thing in life and that is, you know, yeah. e everything changes. You can turn around right. and tomorrow, you know, you're... You, you the, sh the valves shut off. You don't get any water right. for a while. Exactly. And then uh, as the water goes up in price, it's, you know, that, it's well, more there's, expensive there's the to water all the time. No, I mean, and then it's got August the, is coming, folks. <laughs> but then you've got the uh, chlorine in the water, which the plants don't like. So yeah, you know, when it's just it. terribly dry, you put that chlorine on them and it's, you know. Right. It's, you I started adding dry. rain barrels on my landscape. Right. And so, yeah. That's there, another. You can see, you can really see the difference oh, in absolutely. potted plants when you water with rain barrel water. Absolutely. And not, as opposed to uh, from, uh, mm -hmm. the, you know, the water, city water supply. Now, if you did um, use the regular water from your faucet, you can let it sit like 24 hours. Right. Fill your water cans, you know, uh, you know, the day before or the mm -hmm. night before. And uh, I don't know how many hours it is, but that chlorine will it evaporate will. out mm -hmm. of there. So yeah. it does help to yeah. get rid of that chlorine for your plants. You have a lot of water, you know, a large container, you can always toss in, you know, a little inexpensive aerator over in there. You just, mm -hmm. you know, plug and in And what aerator. about the little circles you put in for mosquitoes for if you have standing water do you use those no i don't no? have any standing water but well i mean it's like if you had a rain barrel 
Oh, yeah. Well, my wine water. Bar and barrels are covered. They're so covered. I don't, you, know, you don't get this mosquitoes. I don't, I don't have it. Because I know mine has a, a, the top is open. Yeah. And I do use those little circles yeah. to keep the mosquitoes down. Well, so. That works. <coughs> so. yeah. Well, we'll put all these, um, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> we'll put all these recipes Get on some the recipes out there for the folks on the and website, and you know what you can use yes. for what. And so, um, the thing, other thing we have to do in our gardens in June, it's um, it's really the transition oh, yes. month between yes. spring yep. and summer. Yep. Things to do, <coughs> things to and do. it's time to finish planting um, everything and mulching everything. So um, the mulch really helps retain the the moisture and keeps the weeds down. Exactly. So you have to mulch. And uh, it's time to reap the rewards of all those uh, plantings we did in, in April and May and, right. and enjoy the blooms. So, But as far as the annuals, um, you really want to deadhead your annuals. Can, it keeps the blooms continuing on and you want to fertilize them and pinch them back to avoid uh, spindly plants. So, That's, Well, I did all yesterday afternoon, all afternoon. <laughs> right, just pinch them back. You right. think, you know, you're really damaging the plant by pinching no. them back, but it just makes them fuller and right. thicker and right. healthier. So, And be sure you use um, organic fertilizer and not the miracle Grow type. Would be my recommendation. Yeah, because <laughs> it's, it's like giving them a shot of... Right, of, You're, um, right. Well, it's the... It's the cocaine the, the, of... <laughs> yeah, the difference is <laughs> when you go to a chemical fertilization program, you are... Uh, forcing the plant to take on nutrients. Mm -hmm. It's it's sort of like, you know, mainlining, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, w the organic approach is you lay it out and the plant takes what it wants when it when wants it. Needs it's it. sort of like a buffet, mm -hmm. you know. But it's the plant's choice. Mm -hmm. The other way, it's not the plant's choice. The plant is being yeah. forced to take on. Right. That's why when some people fertilize and if they, it has too much nitrogen in it, and then they see problems with the plant, they don't realize it's an overdose of nitrogen, mm -hmm. you know, which right. is the biggest culprit. And then herbs, um, <clears throat> you can still be planting some of your herbs, right? Yeah, you can uh, plant herbs right. now. I would just, uh, I would caution people that when you start seeing blooms forming on the top of herbs, keep them pinched off. Right, because yeah. that just makes them bold. Right, you know, that'll so. just make them bold. Yeah, and then, um, Bulbs. You can you can plant your spider lily and your little naked lady that surprise lilies, but some people call them naked ladies. Uh, you can plant them for fall bloom, and then you want to remove your foliage from your spring uh, spring blooming bulbs because um, after six weeks they've been feeding that bulb mm -hmm. and making the new flowers. So you can take those off, and if you plant um, gladiolas, you can plant them in succession, like plant a few one week and a few the next week, and it spreads out your bloom time, too. Yeah, that's a good idea. And then um, be sure and stake your dahlias if you have dahlias. Oh, yes. Yeah. Because they get big and heavy, so yeah. be sure and stake those. Yeah, a little, little tip on that, what I do, I, I've got wherever I want dahlias, I have a 5 8 uh, inch piece of rebar oh. in the ground. Uh -huh. So that's, that is the dahlia station, mm -hmm. okay? So every year when I have a new dahlia, I just go to that stake and plant it there because, mm -hmm. you know, they do get heavy. They do because the blooms mm -hmm. get yeah. so big. <laughs> yeah. And then the perennials. Um, so the daylilies should be blooming soon. Yeah. And, and they're starting. Daylilies so. will be, uh, be blooming soon on perennials. You want to make sure that you, um, you know, keep uh, all your perennials deadheaded when mm -hmm. they're through blooming. You know, keep them uh, deadheaded, um, and uh, uh, that, that's that's about yeah. the main thing. Perennials pretty much take care of themselves. Right. And you know. the mums, you got to pinch back those mums yeah. till about June, July fifteenth or so. Yeah, I usually about the middle of July, mm -hmm. then you stop. Uh, mm -hmm. If you want to get, if you want to get good September and October right. color. Mm -hmm. Right. And some people don't pinch them back; they let them bloom and then they pinch, you know, trim them and. Dead head them and they bloom again sometimes. Sometimes they'll do a double bloom. Sometimes yeah, they will. Some cultivars will. Yeah. And then your lawns, uh, Bermuda, you want to fertilize every 30 to 45 days um, and um, mow to maintain a height of uh, about two inches. About two inches on um, Bermuda. Yeah, I like Bermuda at more like uh, two and a half. Two and a half. You know, okay. and, uh, and fescue should be about three, two to three. Yeah, I just saw a new thing from the University of Arkansas listing uh, all the grasses that grow in northwest Arkansas. Mm -hmm. And it was, you know, like seven, eight, nine different kinds of grasses. 
And I noticed that on every one of the fescues, they were recommending three inches mm -hmm. for mowing height. Right. And uh, don't take off more than a third at a time. You know, don't let it grow to eight inches right. or something and then try right. to get it down to three. Right. It uh, really stresses the, the plant terribly. And they require deep watering, uh, at least an inch of water a, yeah, a most, week. Yeah, most turf grasses, uh, it's better to do one nice big deep watering mm -hmm. than a lot of little frequent, right. you know, you can, the roots want to stay near the surface mm -hmm. and then we, we have a yeah, severe yeah. winter or you want those deep or, roots or a severe summer then you have a problem right yeah. and then roses aphids are going to be coming yeah we and talked fungus. about aphids yeah. so you know what to do on that right. and you're going to see black spot coming up and mm -hmm. you know I, I try to keep mine uh, dusted with you know cornmeal mm -hmm. you know or cornmeal drenches if it gets worse or you know there's various recipes for that and we can have that on the website mm -hmm. keep your roses deadheaded mm -hmm. Uh, I would recommend when you're doing that, by the way, especially on the Floribundas, you know, as you go from rose bush to rose bush, disinfect those pruning shears so you don't oh. spread the rose rosette virus. If you have it. Or right. uh, commonly known as witch's broom. That's mm -hmm. another name for it. Right. You know, it's taken out a lot of plants up here. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so clean that pruner. Now, move. what do you use for your disinfection? I use hydrogen peroxide because okay. it's the, the least toxic, you know, mm -hmm. and if it lands on the plant or the ground, it's, it's, it doesn't it's hurt it. not hurt, doesn't hurt anything. So you just dip the uh, I, I have a little small spray bottle. I a just take bottle. it with me. So when oh. I get through, I just sh -sh -sh -sh, a couple of squirts and, and go to the next And then go to the next bush. one. Right. That's a good idea. Yeah. Very good. And, and if you have a large cut, if you have to cut, if you have, you know, every once in a while you'll get one, one mm -hmm. cane will die back and you gotta, you know, cut it. So if it's like oh, an eighth of an inch or more mm -hmm. type one, uh, I'll I'll give the the tip of that that open wound a little oh. little, little shot of mm. HP there, a little mm -hmm. hydrogen peroxide. And on then the we need to um, talk about the trees. Oh, and one other thing on roses while we're there, keep them fed. Oh, you know, oh yeah, feed them once a month. You know, mm -hmm. uh, during the during the blooming season, and then the Japanese the, beetles. You know, those have to be. I take mine off by hand. Yeah, just, I do too. Take, yeah. But it takes a lot of yeah. food to produce all those blooms, mm -hmm. for especially all the floribunders. Right. Yeah. And trees and shrubs take out the dead limbs and be sure and get they have their water at least once a week, an inch. And um, vegetables. You know, it's time to be. Yeah, poor vegetable uh, gardens right now with all this rain. Yes, they're just drenched. <laughs> they're just so. drenched. And, so hopefully they'll recover. Yeah. The so. main thing is, as soon as the weather warms up, the tomatoes will be taken mm -hmm. off again. You mm -hmm. know, I hear from a lot of growers who are saying, my tomato plants look fabulous, but they're, no. not, they're not moving. <laughs> they're not <laughs> growing. They're not turning it green. They're the same size they were. When, yeah. uh, but they will. But keep in mind, again, it takes a lot of energy to produce that fruit. Mm -hmm. and, and they uh, need fertilizer. Keep them uh, fertilized once a and month. And mulched. Yeah, yeah and mulched. But don't forget to enjoy your garden. That's the main thing. Yeah. Um, after you've put all this work in, you want to just sit and enjoy yeah. it. And, Get out there. And watch yeah. the birds and the butterflies. Yeah. And yeah. So. Enjoy it. Don't That's take right. it, you know. Don't go work and then go inside. Yeah. Right? And, you know, if you have a loss, don't, don't fret. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, just relax. Yeah, okay. If you have it. any other questions about gardening in June, remember the Master Gardener Hotline is up. And it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday from uh, 9 to 12 and 1 to 4. And just call uh, 271-1060. You can talk to a master gardener. And their website also has a lot of information, bentoncountygardening.org. And for more information on the Bella Vista Garden Club, you can go to the Bella Vista Garden Club website. It's very simple, bellavistagardenclub.com. And um, we're taking a hi hiatus of meetings this summer, so we'll be back with our meetings yep. in September. First meeting in September. Right. Wednesday, September 23rd right. at 11 o'clock at the United Lutheran uh, Church on Cooper Road. Mark your calendars. Right. <laughs> Wednesday the 23rd. Right. And uh, always welcome guests. You right. know, guests are always welcome to the Garden Club. Well, it's a dynamic group. And it that's is. When I first moved here, you know, seven years ago. and. Um, Went to lots of different clubs and a lot of meetings. They were the most exciting meetings was the Bella Vista Garden Right. Club we are just a unique group. Yep. We really yeah, are. Yeah, it really is. And um, thank you, Tony, for sharing all this information. It's always um, a pleasure. You know, yeah. it's, I just learn every time I talk to you. I learn right. something. Right. So that's what gardeners are all about is learning. We always learn something, right. something new every day. So, um, And I hope you enjoyed the program. And, and 
Well, tune in next month, and until then, don't forget to stop and smell the roses. Exactly. And feed the birds. <laughs> Thank you.